For the following exercises, graph the given functions by hand. Okay, get ready for some transformations. We've done tons of problems like this before, so if you want to look at easier ones, you could go back in the playlist. If you guys are on the absolute value playlist, you could check the description to get the playlist. Um, but these are more advanced, so let's let's give it a shot. So the first one, we have f of x equals the absolute value of 3x plus 9 plus 2. The first thing that we have to know is we have to memorize what the default uh, graph is, the most simplest graph. I see that I have an absolute value here, so the most simplest graph for an absolute value is f of x equals just the absolute value of x, or remember that the f of x is just the absolute value uh, the f of x is actually y. They mean the same thing. And the graph looks like this. Whee! It's a v. It starts in the origin, and you go, um, you go up one over one on both sides. So you kind of get like this nice linear uh, straight uh, v on both sides. So definitely just memorize what those graphs, that graph looks like. Now, the next thing is that before you do anything else, if there is a 3 times the x value inside, we want to get rid of that immediately. Whenever, we want, whenever we're doing absolute values, just know that we want that multiplied number outside of the absolute value graph. That way we can do the actual transformation. So. I, I, I'm treating this absolute value as like parentheses, right? If I want to pull this 3 out, and this whole thing is kind of like parentheses, right? I can, if I pull the 3 out, I get 3 times 1, you know, would be just x. But then I have a 9 here. Can I to multiply 3 times anything to get 9? Sure, right? 3 times 3 is 9. So that works out perfectly. Instead of seeing the function as this, I can pull out the 3, and now it would be just the absolute value of x plus 3, and then plus 2. This makes it much easier for us to do our transformations. Now we just have to figure out what is additional to this that was not included in my original function. The only thing that was included was the absolute value of x, right? But everything else, all those three numbers, the 3, 3, and the 2, they were added. So I'm just going to color code this. I have a multiplied by 3 in the front. That's different. I have a plus 3 that I have to work with, and I have a plus 2 at the end. So I have to do technically three shifts to this one graph. Always work from the inner function's outward. So we have to work inside the function first. This, the inside functions, remember from transformations, um, that your inside functions are always shifting from the right or left. They're horizontal shifts, okay? So inside is always shifting left or right. And just know that if you're going to the right, You'll see that as a negative number. And if you're going to shift to the left, you're going to see that as a, a positive number. We have a plus 3. So we're going to go to the left, because it's a plus, 3 times. So I'm just going to say left 3. So I'm going to take my graph, and I'm just going to move all of my points, basically the whole graph, over 3 lines to the left. So. 1, that would be going every, uh, moving all the points to the left once, twice, and then three times. So now we are here. Next, what would we want to do next? Are we going to multiply everything by 3, or are we going to add 2? What would be PEMDAS rules? You go by PEMDAS. The next thing we do is we're going to have to multiply everything by 3, right? So now, what does a multiplied number, and I'll just put it over here, what does a, a multiplied number, in this case a 3, 
mean outside. This is a vertical stretch. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take all your y values and times it by that number. In this case, you're going to times it by 3. And you're going to shift all of those numbers to the number that you found. So, for example, let's start right at the, the bottom, right? The y value for this, and remember the y-axis is up and down, the y number would be a 0. So 0 times 3 is just 0. So that's why this point stays exactly the same. But now let's check for this. Both this and this are at a y of 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. That means that these new points have to go to a y equals 3. So I have to shift them from here, 1, 2, 3. They will now be not here, but here. And let's just do it for the next two points. These two points are at a y of 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So they can't be here anymore. They have to be at a y of 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So they'll be all the way up here. So if I get rid of this original graph, you will see the new lines for the new graph. So let me just do those. Perfect. There you go. And that gets rid of the 3 in the front. The only thing left that we have to do is now add 2, which was outside of the function. Outside guys, and I will put that over here, outside is always vertical transformations. You're just shifting the graph up or down. If you're shifting it up, that had to have been a plus number. If you're shifting it down, that had to have been a negative number. This one, we have a plus 2. So we are going up up two. Jeez. So what I'm going to do is maybe I can grab all of these at once. I'm going to go up two, which means that I take the whole graph and I go up two. So one, two. And there are your new coordinates. So you have this guy, you have these two, and then these two up here. But just as long as you have the three, you can kind of see the graph. So this would be f of x equals 3 times the absolute value of x plus 3 plus 2, or it would be the same as saying the absolute value of 3x plus 9 plus 2. Either way, it's the same answer. Yay! Okay, last one. f of x equals negative times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3, Remember, your original function was just f of x equals absolute value of x, or y equals the absolute value of x. So here it is. Always starts at that origin, and then it goes upward as like a v. Always work from the inner functions to outer functions. I just see that I have an x here. I don't have like a 2x or a 3x, so I don't have to do any manipulations. So I'm just going to take note that I have three things. Basically, I have this minus over here. I have a minus 1, and then I have a minus 3 or a negative 3. For these, if you see just a minus 1, you can do those first. This is a reflection. You're going to be reflecting around the x-axis, which means that instead of it being a v, it's now going to be a mountaintop. It's going to be a nice little peaked mountain. Basically what you're doing is you're taking this graph and you are rotating it. Whee! Let's see this. This. Whoop. That looks pretty good. Let's see. So you're basically just reflecting it over the x-axis. So it was originally like this, right? But all of the values are now just crossed over that x-axis to the new points. So if you want to think of it as 
a V going to a mountaintop, that's perfect. So that's what this minus sign means. Now we can do these two. Minus one, it's inside, and remember inside functions are horizontal shifts. If you're going to the right, it's a negative. If you're going to the left, it's a positive, right? This one is a minus one, so we're going to the right. How many times? One time. So I'm just going to take this and go to the right once. I got to shift the whole graph over once. So one, bam, that's it. Now I do this one, minus three. This is outside the function. These are vertical shifts. And remember, going up is a plus, going down is a minus. This was a minus three, so I have to go down three units. So I'm going to take that, take the whole graph down three. So one, two, and three. Mine kind of came out of the page, but you can just cut it off by just giving it arrows over here and then just getting rid of the rest of the graph. There you go. And this would be f of x equals negative times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3. And there you go. Not bad. And then, you know, these are the other answers. The actual graph, though, is what's important. So, guys, what do you think? This one was fun. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I hope this is helping you out and understanding your transformations and all of that. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Best of luck in your class. Keep studying hard. And I will see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.